Okay, welcome back. In the last video, I covered authentication. Authentication is critical to Firebase uh, in a large part because it drives Firebase security rules. Now, security rules are how you secure your data. Uh, if you've got Firebase data out there and it's not secured, it's available to anybody, the right read or write. If you have an open endpoint um, and, it, and is writable to the world, anyone can sort of hijack your Firebase with it. Now, we don't want that to happen and we don't want to leak data. So we've got some pretty straightforward data structures we can stick to that will make it really easy to write rules, make the whole system a lot simpler. Okay, so I've put up here a data structure that I like that, man that sort of plays directly into security rules. Okay, so I've got, in this case, I've got three users, Kanye West, Taylor Swift, and Ryan Seacrest. Okay, Kanye West... Ryan Seacrest is second, and then we got Taylor Swift. Now, in the auth example we showed earlier, I got these auth tokens and some UIDs. You can see over here in auth, these UIDs match up to these keys. So this is um, authentication slash user own slash preferences slash UID. This UID is Kanye's UID. This UID is Taylor's UID. You see how these match up. So zero or o, zero QS, zero QS, PXLR, PXLR. All right. And I don't know that we don't have any other. We don't have any other data for Ryan Seacrest. Okay. So he doesn't have any. But you'll, you'll notice these, these keys are shared. Okay. So this is, an, this is a UID for Kanye, UID for Kanye, UID for, oh, there's Kanye's UID again on the tweets. Okay. So pretty straightforward. I just mocked this up in JSON here and loaded it directly to this endpoint using uh, import JSON. So there we go. Next, security rules. We want to secure user owned so that they are readable these objects are readable and writable um, to any to the user so kanye can then edit read and write anything under user own slash preferences slash his uid and i'm going to make it really fancy and say actually wildcard this object name so i could have preferences i could have uh you know transactions i could have any number of different objects here and as long as it's slash his uid he can read and write everything below that okay next we'll have a user readable node exactly the same except we're just going to set up read read access not write access and writable same thing you can write to it you can't but you can't read to read from it this is sort of for queuing uh say that so for example in this case the tweet queue um so Taylor here has said, I heart you all like Kanye hearts Kanye. Great. She can write that to this queue. She can't write it to the actual tweets. Then my system, my server will then go back and grab this queued item and write it accordingly, fan it out. Um, so this is how you manage sort of one-way data coming from the user. So this is one way, user readable is one way to the user, user writable one way from the user user own stuff like preferences that they can just edit it. It's low security, not super, you know, not, not super sensitive data there. Okay. All right. Of course, we also want to secure the user's nodes so that we'll probably make it uh, user writable, but not, sorry, user readable, but not writable. I'd want to manage this by my server. Okay. So security rules. There are different ways to write security rules. There are two ways right now. You can write a JSON file. You can even type it straight into here. So I could say, authentication, and I've got a dot read rule. I can set that to true, and I have a dot write. rule I can set that to true as well so let's publish that really quickly um, all right back to the data 
So authentication now, this whole node is read write true. So I can come over here to authentication, that's my guy. Copy that, open a new tab, dot, add dot JSON to the end, and voila, the whole thing just is readable to the whole world. Now let's go back here to rules, say, let's make it um, false, no longer readable. Okay. Okay, permission denied. Now let's say, okay, real quick, we gotta cover cascading. Uh, Firebase, when you query one node, you can always get all of its children. So if you can read a node, you can read all of its children. If you can write to a node, you can write to all of its children. You can erase the node. So there's no detailed uh, read, write access at child nodes. You've got to recognize that your rules cascade. So while reading the rules, um, the moment I get down here, I've got rules list, node client, query data, those are different nodes. Oh, then I've got the authentication. I've said read false, write true. I now can't read anything under authentication ever, no matter what, but I can write whatever I want to any child node. So I've just sort of attacked all the child nodes at once. Let's see, okay, under authentication, I've got, let's say, user owned. So let's ask the user readable. Let's say I wanna go down here and say, user readable dot read true. Okay, so now user readable will be true, but I've already said it's false up here. So publish, okay. So obviously I can't get there. Can I get to user readable? Oh, I got it. Oh, you're kidding. So I was able to actually grant access down there below. Okay. I actually was unaware that that was even possible. Very cool. Let's see if I can do reuser writable. All right, permission denied. And of course, permissions denied at the top node. All right, so I can do that. So just ignore everything I just said about that. Apparently they've changed things and now you can actually add some detailed rules down below. Um, my system doesn't require, doesn't require that. Um, the system I use um, lets me set rules at, the, at sort of deeper levels so that I don't have any cascading problems. I just still can't believe it. it. Let me read it. That's fantastic. Okay. Um, now, of course, if I set this to false, let's just make sure that that does what I think it does. Okay. So we're good. Okay. User readable, false. All right. So this is JSON. We also, we've got these rules. We've got uh, dot read. we got dot write. We've got dot index on, which lets us index on different children. This is important for queries. Uh, we also have a dot validate. So we can say dot validate. Um, I'm not gonna go over validation right now. Uh, it's not that tricky actually. I, I do my validation from Bolt and Bolt's what I'd really like to cover right now. Bolt is the key to this whole adventure. Uh, Bolt compiles out your rules here because typing these out can get really, really tiring. So let's publish those rules. Let's get back here to the data and look at the data again. Okay, Bolt. How to use Bolt. First, you npm install, npm install g firebase bolt. I already have it, but we'll reinstall it. Get it updated. Great, we got Bolt. All right, then you create a file called securityrules.bolt. Now let's add some rules to Bolt. All right, so I've got two functions, and there we go. Let's start with this. So you start off with, you can, you can mix these little functions you see above and with these path statements. So instead of, instead of having to write JSON and nest under the rules according to your path, you just write paths equals slash authentication. In this case, we're just gonna work under the authentication node, slash users, slash uh, UID. So putting these little 
curly brackets around something makes it into a wild card. So it then applies to all children of users. Um, and then, but then the wildcard value UID then becomes a variable that we can access within this path block. So I'm going to say I want to add read access, which is it's like this kind of function call. It's a little funky. Um, I want to add read access if is user or is admin. And now my is user function takes auth. Auth a u t h is a is a system provided variable that um, object that you get a hold of and it's got auth.uid it has the um, the uid on it so auth.uid it's equivalent to your auth object that you would get from your auth guy so over here in auth i've got app.user it's equivalent to this object right here so you should be able to get to email and these different bits is anonymous, whatever. But we're just going to use the uh, .uid. Okay, that's the key. Auth.uid. Um, so this uid here is is a wildcard variable that we now get for this path. So I'm going to pass the auth objects that just comes. It's always available within these blocks. And I'm going to pass this UID, which is a wildcard, into my isUser function. I'm also going to call or is admin and pass just the auth object. Okay, isUser says, um, does auth.uid equal the user key or the UID? I just call it user key up here, so I wouldn't be repeating UID over and over again. Anyway, I pass the second argument in. The second argument has to match auth.uid from the first argument. In that case, we know the user matches. So we've got users. If the auth.uid is 0QS7, blah, 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 um, then th in this case, Kanye has access to authentication slash users slash 0QS7, 0, blah, blah, blah. Now, next, this next function is is admin. I've set up a little admin system where you see this user. So Seacrest, in this case, he's the admin. So check it out. He's got his UID, then is admin is true. So I'm going to say is admin root. Root is a, another special object we have access to. And that's the root of your whole Firebase. Root.child authentication dot child users dot child auth dot uid so i passed an auth down here i can call auth dot uid so this auth dot uid now we've dug down to here then child dot is admin and dot val i got to call that val on it and if that equals true then they're an admin okay i may want to sort oh, oh scratch that okay so that's my read rule. I've also set a write rule, which they can only write if they're the admin. So Seacrest can write whatever he wants to anybody's to anybody's user object. And let's say I probably want to, at some point, filter or query by email address. So I'm going to say index on the email. Okay. So next, we're going to do something very similar for the user readable node. We're going to put wildcard object type in here, past UID. So now we've all different, all the user, user readable um, objects, in this case, three tweets or tweets, will be wildcarded to object type. And the UID, of course, will match up to that UID. Great. And we've just said, we've given user access again, read access and write access to just to the admin. Um, this is really very similar to the users. The users node is sort of a user readable, but not writable. Okay, next, user writable. In this case, we're only going to give read access to admin. We're going to give write access to the user and the admin. Next, user owned, read and write access across the board. Okay, pretty straightforward. We've established these nodes, user owned, user readable, user writable, and users, and we've secured them. Excellent. You can then you can build a whole app out underneath this data structure, and you don't really need a lot more rules. This may be enough to cover your whole app. I've written whole apps under just the under these 
four basic rules. Okay. That being said, well, there's you, you sometimes want to validate. So let's do some validation real quick. Here is a validation rule. Path user owned preferences UID. So now I'm going to go not just to any user owned. In this case, I said user owned wildcard object type. I'm going to address preferences directly. UID is preferences. Okay. Now I'm going to say type, type preferences. Here's where you get to use your validation rules and you get to set your, your, um, I get to secure and validate your data. So in this case, I'm not going to let you write to this, to this preferences node. Obviously it's wrong right now, but if you wanted to write to it, you would have to pass this validation rule. So this dot excuse dot length would have to be less than 20, 20 characters. Um, and this dot respect rating would have to be greater than five. Or sorry, less than five. So I can't write, I can't write to this without the respect rating being less than five and the length of the excuse being less than 20. Uh, using autotune is now a Boolean. Use autotune is a Boolean. Uh, excuse is a string and respect rating is a number. Okay, so I, I can set this up however I want. Uh, there are a lot more details on how you can get more complicated with this. Like you can get very sophisticated with your validation. I'm not going to cover that because it's very, very use case specific. This is the most general rule I could come up with. Okay, so let's call it, let's compile this. Firebase bolt um, security rules dot bolt. So if I just fire that off, oops, didn't like that. Ah, let's try that again. There we go. So it made security rules JSON. Okay, authentication. You can see these rules, they're a little, they're a little ugly. This is why This is why I really just use Bolt because I hate reading these rules. Like writing this out, you can see, you can see how this maps over to the Bolt pretty much one to one, but it's much harder to read. Okay, so I'm just going to pull the, I'm just going to copy paste just the authentication stuff. Um, I'm going to copy paste straight in here into rules. We're just going to overwrite authentication. That was exciting. Okay, publish, cross fingers it works. Okay, it worked. All right, so our rules just went up. Now let's, let's not look at this anymore. I really don't wanna look at these rules. Let's look back at our bolt. Okay, so user readable.json. Can I get to it? No, I most definitely cannot. All right. User readable. How about retweets? Can I get to retweets? Nope. How about if I want to just read my own retweets? In this case, retweets slash. This is. These are Taylor's retweets. So Taylor's retweets, can I get to them? I can't get to them because I have an auth. So auth equals, I now need to get an auth token. We're gonna get auth token by authing as Taylor. Same thing I did earlier, set this up. Sign in Taylor, you got this. All right, app.user.get token, then function token. Check it out, I just got this ugly token it is a long one but this will work for the json endpoint check that out and we're in so taylor can read taylor's stuff can taylor read kanye's stuff Ooh. let's see if kanye Oh, that is so hard to read. There. So no. 
So Taylor can't read Kanye's retweets. Taylor can only read Taylor's retweets. All right. So this, I mean, this is pretty straightforward. This, uh, I haven't, I'm not going to try to test the right rules. The right rules are, I mean, if the read rules work in this case, the right rules are going to work. You can do your own testing. Um, it's really hard to test with the REST API like I just showed you. Um, it's hard to test right. It's easy to test read. Okay. Now, let's see if I can, let's see if I can save some data under here. So, from this, this view, I have admin access, so I could really write anything I want. But I did do some validation, so let's see if I'm even allowed. I've never actually tried this before. Some fake UID. Let's see. Let's see if I can add some fake data. Fake, true, add. Oh, it'll let me do it. It'll let me do it. Okay, may need to revise this a little bit. But this is the gist of your preferences. Huh, it let me end run the, uh, the validation rules. We'll have to test that separately in a different video maybe. But this is what validation rules look like. Obviously. My attempt at doing it on the fly and testing it on the fly here failed. Anyway, okay, let me know if you have any questions on this, hit me in the comments. Um, I've got some written material on this that goes a little deeper, goes quite a bit deeper. So I'll publish a link to that. And yeah, I'll be back next time. Thanks for listening.